earlier I was using this circuit to demonstrate uh, the Analog Discoveries Network Analyzer. Uh, this is simply a, uh, an operational amplifier, a 741, configured as a bandpass amplifier. That is, it has a low frequency cutoff and a high frequency cutoff. It was uh, originally on this proto board and I am resurrecting this because a few days ago I received this Siglent generator an SDG 2122X and it occurred to me that while I was testing this generator, and I'm also going to be doing a, a, a review of this generator and comparing it to my old Rigol 1022 over there, but that will come uh, after this. It occurred to me that there is another way to do frequency response of amplifiers like this using arbitrary waveform generators in the sweep mode. So that's what this is all about, and I thought if you don't have an analog discovery or some other unit that will uh, do network analysis, but you do have a sweep generator, one way to do the, the frequency response is to sweep, for example, an audio amplifier and what I'm going to try to do is show you how you can do that not just on a single amplifier but on for example a stereo pair which I know a lot of audiophiles that's an important thing not only to know what the frequency response is but but also to what extent are the channels relatively matched and uh, things of that sort so I'll try to show you how to do that I'm not going to actually use a stereo amplifier, I'm just going to use the same circuit. But what I have on the scope here is a is the output, the sync output from the generator above. And that is currently connected to channel one. It's a little hard to see there get a little more light on it via this cable which is running around to the back so first let me show you how you set up the output uh, the auxiliary output of this generator because I'm going to be using that to trigger when I do the sweep okay to set up the output to, to output a sync signal. You go to the utility menu and then page 2 and press sync. And you may notice, let me zoom in a little so you can see a little better what's going on. It has sync on and off. And I'm turning sync on, and of course that sync is channel dependent. So if you turn the sync on for channel 1, that's what you get out. If you turn the sync on for channel 2, you get channel 2. So it's important to realize that you need to be on the channel that you're using before you do this, or else you may get a confusing signal and wonder why it's not synced. So go to the channel that you're going to use for sweeping and then go to the sink out. Once you have the sink out you can connect it to the oscilloscope and here you will see it's a little bit hard to see because of the uh, light. Let me cut down on the light there and you'll see there's a there's a sink pulse which occurs once per cycle. 
at the present time I have a 1 kilohertz uh, sine wave output. The reason you need this is you need to synchronize the oscilloscope display to the sweep rate and what we will be doing is the signal, the sync signal will occur as the generator begins its sweep. So this will be the low frequency and then it will sweep up to the high frequency and when this pulse occurs, the, the following sync pulse, it will reset back to zero and then go again. So in this case this would be low frequency, high frequency, back to low frequency, back up to high frequency. So let's set that up and I'll show you how it works. Here is the input and output of the amplifier, the op amp. The input is on the top in yellow and it's approximately one volt peak to peak. The output is on the bottom and these both channels are set to the same scale, that is 500 millivolts per division. And as you see it's a approximately 2 volts peak to peak on the output. The mid-band gain of the amplifier is 2 and falls off at low frequencies as well as at high frequencies. So we'll now set up the sweep generator to show exactly where the gain falls off at the low and high frequencies. Now I've set the generator to sweep. The start frequency is 50 Hz and the stop frequency is 10 kHz. The display shows that I have it set to a log sweep. In other words, it sweeps slower through the low frequencies and then faster as it gets to the high frequencies. This is the, the standard type sweep for a Bode plot, which is the normal way to plot a frequency response. And I have the sweep time set to 119 milliseconds. Let me show you why I chose that particular time. Down here on the scope, on the top screen is the input. On the bottom screen is the output. And you may notice that at the low end, the response is less than unity. It then goes to, these are set to the same scale, so this is basically a 2 to 1. In other words, uh, e equal height of this trace means that it's twice the voltage of this trace, which is the gain of 2 we looked at earlier. So it reaches that at about this point. And I said that I was going to explain why I have the sweep time. The sweep time is the time shown on trace 3 here. That is the the time across from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency. So what I'm going to do is slowly increase that sweep time and you'll see that it fills it moves the uh, that's now 130 milliseconds and you see now it runs all the way to the right hand edge 129 milliseconds. So in other words I adjusted the sweep time just to show a convenient uh, scope display. Further, the sweep time you have to allow depends on your circuit. You have to allow the circuit to respond to the frequency. So, in other words, there have to be enough cycles for the circuit to produce an output. If you try to use too fast a sweep time, you'll find that the circuit behavior will get a little bit squirrely in that you'll think you're getting one 
kind of response, but you're actually getting a completely different response because basically the slew rate of the amplifier is being exceeded because you're not allowing enough uh, time for the uh, amplifier to respond to the input. And if you recall, we removed the bypass capacitor. I'll show you what we're talking about here. This capacitor, the 0.01, is bypassing the feedback resistor, and that's what's limiting the high frequency response. So I'm going to now pull that capacitor out while you watch on the screen. And there you see that we're still getting low frequency roll off, but at the high frequency it goes all the way to the uh, stop frequency, in this case 10 kilohertz. Now I'm going to change the stop frequency first to 20 and finally to 100 kilohertz and finally 300 kilohertz. And you'll notice now that we are reaching the upper frequency limit of the op amp itself. In other words, this is with no uh, feedback compensation, no uh, capacitor across the feedback resistor. At this point, the op amp has reached its gain bandwidth limit. And irrespective of any feedback, any capacity feedback we might provide to limit or not limit the upper frequency response, you can't go beyond this point because of the op amp as we saw in the uh, analog discovery experiment using the network analyzer. So that is how you can use a sweep generator to uh, generate a Bode plot essentially of an amplifier. In case you're wondering, the reason that the left hand edge is not precisely synchronized is that I'm using the sync out to trigger the oscilloscope and the exact point at which the generator starts over is determined by the exact point at which it stopped working or stopped sweeping at the top and that will vary by uh, up to one cycle difference. So I hope this is uh, at least gives you an idea of how you might be able to use a sweep generator if you don't have access to a network analyzer. So what are the downsides? Well the downside, the biggest downside is you do not get any phase response out of this. Now if you want to calculate the phase response you can set the scope up to measure the relative phase between the input and the output, but the oscilloscope can't generate that across the entire frequency range. Instead you have to go frequency by frequency. So you put in a sine wave of say 100 Hertz. You measure the phase response. You plot that. Then you go to 200 Hertz, 300 Hertz, and so on. It's a tedious process. A network analyzer will do that phase response for you over the entire frequency range. So it's much more convenient. Given the cost of the analog discovery, I think it would be, if you're going to be doing very many of these, I would simply say use the, uh, get an analog discovery and use that. Or there are more expensive network analyzers that you can get. But if you just want a general idea of the frequency response of a circuit you're working with, using the sweep generator function on an arbitrary waveform generator is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. Now I'm going to get back to the comparison of this signal generator with the Rigol. After I uploaded 
the preceding video, I realized that I had never shown you the situation in which you use the external trigger of the scope and there are reasons for doing this. So I reset the, uh, the experiment to back up. Same basic uh, sweep and I've reinserted the capacitor so that you can see the difference. But as you may notice here, I'm no longer using channel 3 to trigger the oscilloscope. I'm using the external trigger. And you might ask, why would you want to do that if you have channel 3 available? Well, if you have a stereo amplifier, for example, and you want to look at the input and output of both channels, you need four channels for that. So you might want, there are situations where you might want to use the external trigger. Also, if you only have a two-channel oscilloscope, and you want to look at the input and output. Once again, you might want to use the external trigger. And finally, if you have a two-channel oscilloscope and you just want to look at the outputs of two channels, say two stereo channels, you'll want to use external trigger. So that's what I have set up here. And what we're going to do is the same change that we made originally. That is, I'm going to remove the feedback capacitor. And what you'll notice is that the frequency response, instead of tailing off like it does here, will go all the way out to the limits of the operational amp. There it is. Okay, so uh, I should have put this in the original video and I forgot to uh, to, to shoot this part. So I'm going to insert this uh, near the end and hopefully it won't be too disjointed that way. Once again, uh, appreciate you watching.